Hey guys, welcome back to Proclamation. This week we're back again with three new tech updates. The first one being Samsung potentially releasing their very own laptop, finally. Now the ecosystem war has been going on for a while between Apple, Huawei, and Samsung, where they've had great competition in smartphones, earphones, and even tablets. But the one place where Samsung was kind of lacking behind is their laptop side of things, their PC or whatnot. But with this Galaxy Unpacked event coming late April 2021, uh, we can potentially see a laptop coming into that space, that ecosystem realm, where we could have a Galaxy Book Pro as well as a Galaxy Book Pro 360. Now, this isn't something very new. It's something they've been hinting for a while. And the announcement for this event is the most powerful Galaxy yet and most likely that is going to be a laptop. So the rumor has it that these laptops are going to be running the 11th gen Intel processors within them and the Galaxy Book Pro is going to also come alongside the Galaxy Book Pro 360 which is not much of a traditional laptop with the keyboard layout. It's potentially going to be a detachable tablet style laptop where you can also use the S Pen with the 360 version. This is pretty interesting stuff. Nice to see Samsung dabble their toes in the realm of laptops as well as convertible touch tablet slash laptops. Pretty interesting and we'll be able to cover this event once it does arrive. The second update comes in in the world of consoles and we're talking about the PlayStation 5. Now, if you guys own a PlayStation 5, congratulations. We really hate you. We don't have a PS5 and we're very jealous. But the PS5 comes out with its very own update with a few sneak features and a lot of improvements for certain things. If you use them day to day, you'll really appreciate these updates. So the first update within the PS5 is the ability to turn on auto HDR detection so it can automatically switch between HDR and SDR, which is standard definition. So you would have to traditionally do that by yourself by going into different settings for games that don't support it. But this time around with this update, it's going to do it automatically by itself so you don't have to worry about it. The second update within this comes in from the HDMI wherein you can finally use your TV much like a monitor where when you boot up your PlayStation, it also turns on the TV for you. So you don't need to turn one thing on and then the TV on as well. And vice versa, it works the same. If you turn off your TV, it puts your PlayStation into rest mode. Pretty nice touch, I guess. It's something that you would have wanted anyway and it's great to have it. The third thing within this is going to be the external hard drive support which means you can pretty much save your games on an external hard drive now, but not be able to run them. Now, this isn't all terrible because it comes with its own SSD. The games are able to run pretty well off of the console itself, but this does allow you to save up some space on the console by transferring over your saved games into an external hard drive. So every time you connect it up, you can copy those files over and play your games whenever you want without having to delete and reinstall them every single time. So one of the biggest parts of the update is that you can finally play 1080p at 120Hz of refresh rate if you have a 1080p monitor. Before it was pretty much restricted to 4K at 120 and you needed HDMI 2.1, all of that stuff. So right now you can finally do that. All you have to do is go into your settings and enable the 120Hz refresh rate gaming. Unfortunately, variable refresh rate is still missing on the PS5, but potentially will be coming in with newer updates. The last update we're talking about is being able to run Windows on the newer MacBooks. Now running Windows on your MacBook is something that's not very new. It's been done for a while using things like Bootcamp or applications like Parallel that allow you to run parallel operating systems within an application. So this time around, the M1 MacBooks that came out that we've been using, uh, they're really great, but not all apps have been optimized for them. So you have the Rosetta version, but finally with Parallel 16.5 update, you'll be able to run Windows 10 on your M1 chip MacBook. So I'm gonna read some of the number improvements that they've given us in percentage, what you should expect with the 16.5 update if you were to run Windows 10 on your M1 chip Mac. So the promised improvements are 250% less energy consumption, which will be a really great thing for your battery life if you're doing this portably and you don't have a power source. It's not a very energy consuming uh, version of this software, so you'll be able to run Windows without draining your battery extremely quick. The second thing is going to be 60% better DirectX 11 performance as well as 30% virtual machine performance overall on the M1 Max. This is actually perfect for people who are running a MacBook as their primary device, but sometimes need Windows applications. And with Apple removing the support for Bootcamp, that's no longer possible. This is the best way of doing it and getting the max performance possible. So as of now, there's no official release for this yet, but you can get the preview version of Windows on the MacBook. So we're really excited to see how this actually works out and turns out. And 
Actually, we would be pretty interested to see if we were to install it on our MacBook M1, the Pro version, if you can run Windows smoothly and whether these numbers are actually accurate. We might do some gaming tests on this, some After Effects, Photoshop rendering stuff as well. Pretty excited. Let us know in the comments if you'd want to see something like that. So that's about it. Those are our updates for this week. We hope you guys enjoyed those. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and do consider subscribing for more content like this. And we'll see you again in the next video.